I like to be the weird owl of landscaping is kind of my like there you go. side title. <laughs> Hey, welcome to another episode of the Coffee Break Podcast. Our mission here is to share business ideas, practices, and strategies while we enjoy our cup of coffee. Before we go any further, I want to remind you to share this episode. If you're listening to this on a podcast platform, go ahead and send it out to a couple of your friends through text message. If you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, share the uh, link and share it out with uh, somebody that you might know that would get value out of the conversation today because we've got a good episode coming at you today. And if you haven't already, Make sure you subscribe because we have a brand new episode coming out every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. right here on the Coffee Break Podcast. So today's guest is Mackenzie Brady. She's with U.S. Lawn, and she's going to be talking about developing relationships with clients and, and the ways that she's doing that, some things that she's doing unique, uh, and, and some tips and tricks that may help you as well. It's a great conversation. She's lots of fun, uh, definitely has a unique perspective on creating relationships with her clients. Some great takeaways from the conversation for today. So make sure you grab a cup of coffee and get ready because we're going to jump right into this coffee break. We got so much to say. We got a podcast to make. We're sipping on lattes, and it's time for a coffee break. It's time for a coffee break. Oh, yeah. All right, Mackenzie, welcome, welcome. Thanks. Glad to have you here. Yeah. You were here just a couple of weeks back because we were recording some stuff for uh, CAI. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was fun. That was so fun. I, did you attend the webinar? Mm-hmm. I didn't get a chance to actually attend it. It was impressive. Really? Yeah. I, Jonathan, like, yeah. he nailed it. Yeah. It, that was, it was great. He did good. He's yeah. going to be a guest on the podcast coming up soon, by oh, the way. I can't I'm wait to sure. that. Yeah. All right. It was Let, super fun. Yeah. So uh, let's jump into it. We'll talk a little bit about, about who you are and, and what you do in a little bit. But first, it's rapid fire, five randomly selected questions just to get under your skin with unknown point values. You ready to go? Yes. All right, here we go. Question number one, how do you stay productive and motivated if you have to work virtually? Did you have to work virtually through the pandemic? I did a little bit. Okay. Um, a little bit different for us since outside. Yeah. Um, but I did. Uh, stay motivated. I just, I didn't want to be at home, and I wanted to do stuff. So mm-hmm. I just said, you know, I'm going to still reach out to people and um, – you know, that's what motivated me in a time of unknown things is, hey, I'm just going to keep doing my same routine and wake up and kind of just see what's out there and check on people and pivot when I need to. So. Yeah. Did you have to engage in virtual meetings during that time? Yes, I did. Um, so I had fun with some backgrounds and tried to make the most of it, but just staying motivated of like, hey, I'm still out here, you know, and yeah. not not salesy, but how are you kind of stuff. and. Yeah, you were still here. I know a lot of people that I've talked to over the course of uh, of the the pandemic. They were just struggling because a lot of people weren't taking appointments. A lot of people were their mm-hmm. their schedules were scattered as well, and it was just hard to stay connected. So yeah. All right. Question number two: uh, You have your own late night talk show. Who is your first guest? Oh gosh, who is my first guest? I would say Adele. She is Adele. my number one like music artist she's an amazing songwriter i saw her in atlanta in a huge stadium and the sound quality was chef's kiss so i just want to know about her and her yeah. life oh huh. that that would be a very cool interview she's yeah. she stays pretty uh she's very private yeah when yeah. she's like comes out releases an album then goes away mm-hmm so is she is what's the current status with her right now? Okay, the latest is <laughs> she just was seen with her new boyfriend, who I think is LeBron James' agent, and they were at the NBA Finals. Oh, okay. um, so I'm hoping she's in love and she's going to drop that album. Is speculation? So okay, that's a lot of information. I didn't. <laughs> Not that I've googled it at all. <laughs> I just had that ready to go. All right, uh, question number three: What's your favorite place of all of the places that you've traveled? Oh man. Travel some great places. I think Edinburgh, Scotland. Mm. It just was so quaint, and you feel like you're in like the 16th century, and the buildings are old, but it's a huge city, yeah. also. But the buildings just look cool, and we don't have that in Charlotte. Yeah. So I just love it. Yeah. When did you go? Um, 2016. Okay. Um, but you can take a train and go anywhere in the countryside and Loch Ness and Highlands. I mean, there's just so many cool things there that I can't see yeah. just here. So. so it was a whole Scotland trip. Yep, Scotland, England, and Ireland. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very so, cool. But Edinburgh stood out. It just yeah. is beautiful. We went to, uh, it was, uh, 
what year was it? 2019, maybe 26, 18, somewhere around there. Yeah. Uh, went to Germany. Oh, man. And uh, Italy and uh, France. Oh. And it was uh, the going through the countryside of Germany because we went into Frankfurt. Okay. And then we drove up the Rhine River and went into all these little villages with the cobblestone roads. It was, it's it was so cool. Yeah. It's, it's an experience you, you, can't replicate anywhere else, so I yeah. can imagine that, uh, that that is one place that I would like to go as well. All right, uh, question number four: If you could commit any crime and get away with it, what would you choose and why? Oh man, I'm a rule follower. That's a really hard question. Uh, <laughs> I don't like to get in trouble or anything. I'm like, there's rules, we should follow them. Um, a crime? I, I don't know. I would probably like break into a abandoned park or something. Break into an abandoned park. Yeah, plant. like an amusement Ooh. park wow, or something yeah. creepy. <laughs> or like <laughs> Disney World when no one is there. Just have a day for myself. I don't know. Yeah, wow. Hardcore yeah. criminal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, somebody answered, I asked a similar question before, and she goes, I'm, I've listened to a lot of crime <laughs> podcasts. I could get away with murder. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, this guy a little... This took a turn. <laughs> this escalated quickly. All right, so we'll have somebody that will break into an amusement park and somebody that will... Yeah, uh, and very wholesome park. crime. All right, <laughs> question number five. Uh, what is the last TV show that you binge watched? Loki on Disney+. Plus. Oh, man. Love it. Okay. Loki. I don't want to have spoilers. Is that Luca? Is that or is this something? No, different? it's Loki. Okay. So it's the Loki from the Marvel movies, Thor's brother, and he had this whole spinoff show on Disney Plus. Okay. It was incredible. I could nerd out on the Marvel stuff, so I don't want to take okay. up the whole podcast on that. But it was awesome, and even if you don't follow Marvel, like it's such a good show. Okay, is, is this is like multiple episodes, or is it? It's so the first season. There's six episodes. All yeah. right. I'm sure somebody knows about it. All right, cool. Um, well, you passed five episodes or five questions. <laughs> we'll give you a, a score of uh, 907. Oh, yes. Okay, right. thanks. Cool. Congratulations. All right, so um, so again, welcome welcome to the podcast. Thank you for coming in today. Um, so I remember I was I was thinking through this and and it was it reminded me about it whenever uh, you came by and were part of the recording a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago. I think the first time one of the first times that I. W either met you or became aware of you was at a uh, CAI Community Association Luncheon in Institute. Is that what it stands oh, for? Oh yeah, Institute. Yeah, okay. CAI. I just make it. I'm trying to make up stuff here. <laughs> uh, at a luncheon, and I think it was at the Christmas luncheon, and you got up there to do your introduction, and you did like a, a singogram or something like that. Yes. Yes. So it it stood out. And it still stuck out awesome. with me, right? And I'm like, okay, that's that's interesting. Everybody else is like, we've been in business since 1922, and we blah, blah, blah. Summer style. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you get up there and sing a Christmas carol or something. I don't remember what it was. So I was like, okay, she's got she's doing something a little different. And then uh, so I, I, we've stayed connected on social media, and I've kind of seen some stuff. So I wanted to kind of bring bring you in and discuss a little bit about that kind of your role and how you're approaching things differently in your industry and kind of some of the uh, experiences that you had with it. So before we get into that, give us a little introduction as to uh, as to, to the company that you work, work for. Okay. Um, I work at U.S. Lawns Landscaping, and I think a lot of people think they know about the company. You can Google it. It's mm -hmm. a national franchise mm -hmm. system, but it's locally owned offices. There's 250 in the country. Okay. I just happened to work at, for our two offices here, we have three. Two of them are the top two in the whole country. Oh, wow. So very proud of that. Yeah. Um, my team, we've grown it uh, to be a certain business, and we kind of, the limit does not exist. We're like, oh, cool. We'll just keep growing, and um, it's exciting. So great company um landscape maintenance okay. that's we're maintenance first that's our bread and butter it's probably about 80 percent of our business okay we do some other things irrigation enhancement work which is drainage and other just projects but sure. maintenance that's that's what we do well it's a, it's an interesting i i was i mean I was, I was thinking through a lot of this in preparation and, and i was looking at the website and all this stuff and it's like okay got it like you know simplistically we cut grass but but it's a lot more than that, obviously, mm -hmm. and so there's a there's a whole structure around it. And the biggest thing is that there's so you know, I mean, real estate is out there and it has to be maintained, and somebody's got to do it. So part of my kind of in, initial questions are like, okay, so what separates a U.S. lawn from doing uh, landscape maintenance versus 
John Bob that bought his uh, zero turn lawnmower that throws it up on the trailer and, and gets out there and, and can do it obviously for a significantly less price. Mm-hmm. So I want to ask that question because I'm sure you have a really good answer for it because it's also relative in like every other industry. Mm-hmm. There's there's companies out there that are scaled up and that they're trying to provide a high quality, consistent pro- uh, 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 product. And then there's people that are out there that can do it at a lower cost, but there's obviously differences. So what is your answer to that when people say, why is U.S. lawn charge this when I can have my brother-in-law that has his own lawn care business do this? Right. Um, I do get that a lot, you know, and it's funny. Sometimes when we are going through all the crazy of work, my mm-hmm. operation or my general manager recently said, Let's take a step back. We do we make tall grass, we make it short. That is kind of simple, <laughs> but it is much more than that. It's consistent maintenance, and everyone can go get a lawnmower, cut grass, and mm-hmm. we have people on our teams that do that job. Usually they're our newest hire. Sure. We show them how to get on a mower. This is what we're doing. It's the details and the eye for detail. That is a trained job. Mm-hmm. We train them, and we have programs to train. We have infield training. We have educated team members that have gone to school for – horticulture and turf grass management it's it's all the things it's not just the grass it's the details and you know shrubs covering windows for safety it's it's those details that sets you apart from you can go buy a lawnmower at Moe's I have Lowe's Moe's love that place um you can buy a lawnmower anywhere yeah. and cut grass it's the details and then kind of the pain points we were talking about earlier you, you get into that of mm-hmm. you know the people yeah it's a it, I think a, a lot of it. So the, I like the I like the uh, component that you brought out there. It's the de- anybody can cut grass, but it's the details that set you apart. Uh, and again, I think that's applicable in any type of a business that you're mm-hmm. trying to scale up. So then the question comes back into like um, the consistency, the uh, repeatability, the schedule, and all that stuff because that's something that you do lose when you have you know your brother-in-law that's going to cut the grass because well he decided that he wanted to go fishing today and mm-hmm. so. You know, other things didn't get done. So when you have a business model that is actually built for consistency and to support those customers. Okay. So, um, and again, the reason that I bring that up, I think, is is because we all struggle with that at any point when you're in the service business or in the service industry is, is kind of maintaining that and giving some validity around the value that you bring, not just the price. Mm-hmm. So kind of navigating that down as you're dealing with clients and customers, you know, the, the difference between, you know, just going in for a low bid versus the building relationships and being able to explain the value. How do you, how do you approach that from, from your perspective? So I'm going into a situation, I've got a client over here that's just wanting low bid versus, uh, you know, cultivating a relationship so that you can have the opportunity to explain value. Is that something that you run into? Yeah. And I definitely get caught up. I mean, we talked about at the end of the day, one of my main jobs is to sell a new business. It's a job. I have to do that. Um, but the way we do that is, you know, I get caught up. I'm like, oh, I want every job. I, I drive sure. constantly and my eyes are like this. My husband hates when I'm in the passenger seat because mm-hmm. I'm constantly like talking about it. He's like, can you just cut that off? I'm like, no, I can't. All I see is like, ooh, I want to work with these people. But, you know, I try to focus. Not everyone is the best customer for mm-hmm. us. The people that want a low price, they're changing why are you making that change? Like we want to have a customer for many, many, many years. The sure. only way to be successful in consistent landscape maintenance is to have a customer one year, two year, three year, mm-hmm. five years, 10 years. Like those are our best customers. Um, you know, there are turnover and things like that, but knowing you have history on the site, we are already add value for if a property changes management, we have the history. Hey, sure. let's be partners. This is what we're doing. This is what, let me help you. Here's the program that's in place. Yeah. Um, so the low bid, you know, I come across that. I'm not great at RFPs where there's seven people. I kind of, sure. you know, I want to submit, I don't want to miss opportunity, but I know that's not our best customer. Yeah. I want to have a conversation and talk to you. Like I said, you can Google U.S. Lawns, but I want you to meet me. I want you to meet your account manager. We're people. Yep. Um, and the person on the mower, they may not be there tomorrow, but my manager is going to be there, and they've been here 10 years, and we know that if we're down a person, this is the plan. I mean, it's the people. Yeah. I just don't want to lose sight on, you know, go in for the close when you forget. You're having a conversation with somebody, and it's not always about, you know, the number. And Yeah. 
Uh, it's it's creating. We we've talked about that in our organization some too. Is cr- trying to create a, uh, a a human factor to a service business because, yeah. you know, I think when you is is exactly what you're what you're talking about is when you build relationship with people time and time again, it's significantly different than a disposable service, right? Because yeah. somebody is always going to do it cheaper, mm-hmm. and it may not be better. You know, it's, it's subjective, but somebody can always do it less expensive or, or cheaper, but it's now based off of the relationship and how you handle those situations. There was a guy that, uh, that I was talking to one time in our, uh, in our conference room, and he said, you know, it's interesting. I deal, I deal with a lot of vendors, and he was like, there's a significant difference between vendors that, um, you know, you can, you can separate cost out all the time, all the time, but there's a difference be- between vendors and the way they handle problems mm-hmm. and resolve problems yes. because you're always going to have them. You know, you're always going to, you know, I'm sure uh, in, in your line of work, there's probably rocks that go through windows and things, <laughs> things that are. Don't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> this is not real wood, by the way. Okay, but, uh, the, the, uh, um, uh, there's, there's things that happen and it's how you resolve those problems mm-hmm. versus, well, you shouldn't have the rock there, you know, type of type of situation that all comes down to the relationship. Yes. And that, time and time again I mean we're humans we have failed I have failed that's that's how we're built yeah. we're gonna fail at things and I really think it speaks to something where I, I have people calling me back when I'm like oh man ruin that that was our chance crap yeah. like it, I really dwell on it but they call us back because we've stood the test of time we're still here we're still doing business mm-hmm. we say hey this happened but this is what we're doing forward and I think that really means a lot I've got customers you know and properties change things mm-hmm. happen but I'm having repeat customers. I've done this so long. It's like the third, like, oh, hey, we're back again. And thank you. And I don't know. It just, that really means something. It's the people. Um, But we're the first people to say, hey, we drive the ball. And a lot of companies are like, had your head in the sand. And um, we're definitely not. We like address it immediately. And I think that really shows. Had your head in the sand. Don't answer the phone and then blame it on somebody else. Yes. It's not our style. Yeah. Own it and uh, own it and fix it. We understand the frustrations HOA board members and property managers face when deciding the best solution for their HOA and pool security. Should we use a keypad, hand out keys, or install a key card system? Do we even need cameras? These are some of the questions that are difficult to navigate, and we're here to help. At LockDock Security, we've spent over 20 years working with homeowners associations and property managers to find the system that best fits the pool and HOA needs camera systems for the front gate or front entrance, key card systems for the pool gates, or simply updating the gate so that it meets safety and code compliance. We like to take the guesswork out of the process to answer any questions and help find the right solution. Our mission is to help you protect your people and your property, and that includes pools. Contact our team today to schedule your free consultation for your community. So you also are focused solely on kind of commercial applications. You don't do any single family homes, correct? correct? Okay. Unless it's in HOAs, but um, we're really set up. So I try, I mean, CAI is so great because I can really focus in on yeah. that audience. So. Yeah. So you focus more on the commercial applications. And uh, again, just kind of combing through the website, it shows kind of your, your customer categories. Mm-hmm. It's still broad, even though it's commercial, right? I yes. Mean, it, it's still it's still fairly broad. How, from a from a uh, customer relation management standpoint, how do you kind of address that and focus it? Do you divide it down by those categories? Like, what's your kind of typical protocol for? Hey, I've got to manage all of these clients, and there are so many so many different categories. How do I approach that? Current customers is what you mean. Sure. So we really don't look at that. You know. Our a hotel may have the same account management manager mm-hmm. as, you know, a large commercial site, industrial site. We really try to do it uh, geographical and gotcha. personality. Nah. We mm-hmm. really m- look at that of, like, personality types and um, different – any not Enneagrams. Yeah. That's how I look at people. But you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, people – you're not going to be everyone's cup of tea. So we mm-hmm. kind of say, what type of management style does this person have? And we really – do it that way. Gotcha. And I don't so, know a lot of people do that. They're just kind of like, here, you, you get an account this week, but yeah. we really try to match the people. So you're, you're pairing up account managers. So after you, after you kind of create the initial relationship and then you're creating account management and then you're basically having to go in and 
you know, stay connected with the customers? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm still involved. I'm definitely not a used car sure. salesman person. Um, but I also like to tell people, hey, we have account managers. They have a role. They're very essential to our business. I want you to build a relationship with them. I'm always here, but, you know, I don't want to go, you know, don't go around them. Like, I'm still your bud. We'll hang out. You know, I'll talk to you and I want to know how things are going because I just care about our level of service but our account managers they're just great and hey here's Michael talk to him he loves bass fishing and you guys can talk about that and that's that's how we pair people up it's kind of your first line you're you're going to connect here if you run into issues I'm always here as a a backup we're a team Mm -hmm. so what is a big thing that you've learned through the years because you've been you've been doing this for uh for a number of years what is the thing that you've learned about separating yourself from competition? I was thinking about this in preparation because I definitely think early on, and still it's hard, you know, you have your social media and mm-hmm. you see other people and you get so focused on the highlight reels. Mm-hmm. And I definitely got caught up in that early early on just being green at sales in my industry. Man, we missed out on that. Mm-hmm. And I would just really pick it apart you know, throw on the ground, pick it apart and say, what could I have done? And yeah. sometimes it's just out of your control. And so now I'm like, you know, I'm going to focus on the next thing. I'm going to stop the distractions. I like to be inspired by others. I like to know what other people are doing mm-hmm. just because I find it interesting. But I want to focus on what we're doing next. Mm-hmm. You know, pick up our bootstraps. Hey, we didn't get that account or this didn't work. But what are we doing next? How are we moving forward? Because I can't keep you know, looking back and picking apart, like things that we're doing are great. Yeah. Let's focus on that. Um, so I would just, I just try to, I really did that early on, yeah. like, you know, just, kind of got distracted by the competition. Yeah. But I don't feel that way because I believe so much mm-hmm. in what we're doing in our people that I don't need to worry about that because I know how we're different. I know what we're offering that other people don't have. Yeah. That's a great answer. Because I hate when people ask me that question, so I like to toss it out to other people. Yeah, <laughs> because it's the same same thing. It's I don't pay attention really to the competition, and I don't want us to pay attention to the competition because yeah. that is a distraction. I, and you just clarified that early on. You got distracted by what everybody else was doing, yeah. and so now you're following what everybody else is doing. Once you can set yourself, and one of our guys here, uh, Kevin Starr, says be the bar once you're the bar yes then it, you're not worried about the competition because you're focusing on making sure that you're doing the best at what you're doing and that's that's it if you're distracted by what everybody else is doing then you know yeah. then you're going to just kind of fall to whatever the bar has been set for you yes and i want to go back to the singing thing because i feel like there was no context <laughs> but that is kind of segues i much i was just telling dan mm-hmm. i much rather be doing something silly and Mm -hmm. instead of being like, I work for this company, like that's not my style. Like you can Google it. I'll tell you about our company, but I want you to know me. And I've somehow stumbled into a career path where I can just be myself and have limit, like I can be creative or do the fun things, but Mm -hmm. also work really hard. So I created um, a charity telegrams where you can pay me five ten dollars to go sing a telegram Mm -hmm. to a customer or a friend and it's at christmas it's called songs for second harvest and all the money goes to second harvest food bank but i could just go around and sing to people which i think is super fun yeah the other side people know i work for a company Mm -hmm. and that's marketing and branding so that's why i started doing that at events because yes 10 people get up there, you sponsor, you already forgot like where people work. You're not listening. You're talking to your friends. You're eating your lunch. (laughs) Nobody cares. So I was like, I'm going to get people's attention, but also doing something fun and something for other people. And I don't know. Yeah. My boss was like, my, so we had an original owner for us on Charlotte. His name's William. He somehow was like, you're crazy, but I'm going to hire you. And he just let me do what I wanted to do. And we Grew this business, but I was telling him about my telegrams, and he was like, "That sounds horrible. I can't believe who would do that. Like that sounds embarrassing." But you just do it, and I was like, "It's going to be the greatest yeah. idea I have, and I love it. I do yeah. it. I try to do it every year." So yeah, there's, and I would, I would venture to say that there's not a lot of other people that would be willing to do that in a similar role, regardless of the industry, mm-hmm. but very specifically inside of your industry. So yes, <laughs> I like to be the weird owl of landscaping. Is kind of my like. There you go. Side title. <laughs> so I, I would say that, and again, I, I, I think it's 
it's setting yourself apart from other people regardless. And, and at that point, when you're at, a, where, when you're at an event and you have a, a 60 second you know, stand up pitch, yeah. you have to do something different because everybody up there is up, like you said, everybody's up there, <laughs> come by our booth. And, you know. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, there was, a, there was a, an event later on, and, and I, I, I would not get up and sing in front of anybody. I just want to clarify <laughs> that. But I, I got up and, uh, and gave a pitch. And I tried to take some of those notes, and I was just like, I'm not even going to talk about our company. Yeah. I'm going to tell you about our podcast. And, and we also have coffee at our table. That's how I remember you. I was yeah, thinking back, coffee. like, when I first met Chad, I was like, he was giving out coffee beans, and I wanted to be a part of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, just trying to think through, so, okay, what is something different that's going to catch people's attention? So, okay, kind of kind of circling back on that because this is there's a lot of there's a lot of depth inside of um, of kind of what you're talking about from the from the differentiation so you're and I'm trying to remember where I was going because I got distracted with the whole singing thing uh, but so from a from a separation standpoint you're you're being the bar right you're not worried about what the competition is now so you're kind of implementing your own things I remember what I was gonna say now that I've stumbled around here a little bit <laughs> I really like the concept that you just said earlier that I don't know who you said in your company said it, but we make long grass short. Yeah. Like that is by far the most genius tagline. I would put that on everything. <laughs> we make long we grass short. We have just branded this, so yeah. I need to announce it. <laughs> it's, it's incredible because it gives you the, we make long grass. It, if you ever pay attention to Donald Miller and story brand, like that is a story brand line right there we make tall grass short and this is why we do it you know yeah this is how we do it or but whatever. it's you know we get caught up there's so many more that's way simple of what we do but you know just being in operations meeting we have hundreds of employees mm -hmm. it's a beautiful dance to watch everyone in the morning at 6 30 like in our office i love going there and they're probably like oh what are you doing here yeah. this early but um you know we get caught up and oh man how are we going to get this done and he yeah. just said whoa all we do is we take the tall grass and we make it short. That's literally just go to the job. That's yeah. what we're doing today. Well, but the, the thing is that, you know, across the board, people want to make things, you know, we want to make things sound really complicated because we have a high pride in what we do. So, you know, let's sound fancy. So now we're, now we're, uh, we're, you know, uh, uh, you know, I don't even know what turf specialist, right? You know, we're, we're, we're turf engineers. Yeah. Like, uh, we, we, yeah. Can you copy this key? That's a question we get asked about 3,422 times a year. And how can you actually be sure that the person who asked that question is supposed to get a copy of that key? Well, we think you should always know who can copy your keys to your business and your home because it could be your neighbor, an old employee, a contractor, or even worse, your mother-in-law. At LockDock Security, we believe in protected key systems, so you always know who has a copy of your key. To find out more, visit LockDoc.net or stop by our Charlotte location. LockDoc Security, helping you protect your people and your property. Getting back on track because I've gotten way off track here. Um, when you get in, when you're creating these relationships and you're, you're making contact with people, like it is within any industry, you find pain points, right? So it's, hey... Maybe a pain point is I can't get anybody to show up on schedule or we continually have issues with things being overgrown or we can't get rid of this issue. It's whatever the pain point is. How are you finding those things and addressing those with your customers or are you just going in and saying, hey, these are all the services that we offer? No, I definitely – you can – I don't <laughs> like doing that because I, I just – nobody's listening. You know, they – I also, going back, I would tell myself to, to listen more in mm -hmm. appointments because I'm definitely the person that's like, my thought is next. Um, I'm very bad about doing that. So I try to take a moment, just let people talk. Mm -hmm. And, you know, hey, I don't know how this meeting's going to go, but once people start talking, they're going to tell you those little nuggets of like, oh, okay, I get what you're saying now. You know, I might show up to a job that looks great. Mm -hmm. I'm like, why am I here? Yeah. Um, you know, why would you be canceling? And then, like, how's it going? And we just get those little 
I can't, I don't even know who my contact person is or they've, I've had four contact people and it's just, I don't, they're not listening. They're not hearing me. And so people just love to talk and they want to be heard. That's, that's what they want. And, um, I go in and I listen and then I say, Oh, well, I actually know how to solve this or, and sometimes I'm the first person to say, I don't know that we can help. You know, I think being honest with people too is a huge thing. Don't be the yes person. Um, that gets you in trouble later, but just saying like, here are some solutions that I think our company can offer and let's talk about that. And then I'm going to show you here, go drive this job or this is what we're doing over next door. Mm -hmm. It's worked time and time again. And this is how we can help. But usually it's not about the, the grass. It's really not. It's about the people and the process. Yeah. No, I, I, I would totally agree with that. Whenever you're dealing with clients and dealing with customers and then you're, when you understand the pain point, Oftentimes, the pain point is more of the process, less of the the, the physical thing that they're trying to get solved, right? Mm-hmm. Because like like we've well established, there's a lot of people that can do certain things. Well, now it's who can who can support the client the best mm-hmm. through the process, and, and that's what's going to stand out. So we also were talking about this before we started recording, but you have uh, embraced a lot of industry networks to be able to stay in connection with your yeah. customers. So understanding, and again, the, just kind of the basics, understanding your your ideal client, your, your commercial service provider. So now that you're a commercial service provider, understanding how to get in front of and stay connected with your clients. So what are some ways that you're doing that? Um, the associations are just, they they're invaluable. I mean, they're just so great. And if you're not in an industry association, you need to reevaluate because yes, there is money associated, but you're just, you're getting in front of a customer and you don't have to go through and filter through. You're getting more direct, but also they're connected to people Mm -hmm. and their contacts are connected to people. And that's just, I love networking. I love to find out, Oh, who do we know? We talked about that when I got here. He's like, Oh, I think we have a Facebook contact and we kind of go from there. But that's how you grow everything, mm-hmm. um, even your personal relationships. And then that, you know, I don't know. I just love the networking part, so it's fun for me. But the education that these associations are offering and mm-hmm. things you're like, well, I don't know if I'm interested in that. But you, you never know. I mean, we're, we should always learn and grow professionally and personally. And I just I love the associations. And they're fun. Yeah. So on that note, what – have you learned through being connected with associations from a just joining versus actually being engaged? Well, you get to know, um, you know, I'm the only one in my company right now that's in associations and that's fine. Um, They all have really busy jobs and so we all have our roles. But what I like to say is, you know, I'm meeting with managers, we're having lunch and I'm understanding what they're going through. And sometimes I feel like other layers in our company They don't see that whole side. They just see this customer vendor. But I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh, do you know that they are working till 9 o'clock too? They're going to board meetings. And they were probably up late, just like you were here late closing. And you can like, oh, that's how we're relating. So just learning about their why and processes, I get to go back to my company and say, this is, did you know that this is how their business works? Mm -hmm. And did you know that we're making it complicated for them to pay their pay our invoices? <laughs> you, know, you find out those little things by sitting across from somebody at the, at the table at lunch. So, anything, and then also getting engaged from a, I, I know you're on, we both are on the council with CAI, but you were talking earlier about you've been involved in a couple of different of those mm-hmm. types of things on, on boards and, and things of that nature. Have you seen that help you get a better understanding of the customer, the that ideal customer that you're working towards versus just showing up at the luncheons or showing up at the trade shows? Yeah. I mean, just getting to know people outside of the email or the luncheon, I just think it's invaluable to talk to people and um, get to see their processes. I don't yeah. know if I'm answering. Yeah. Well, it's, it, I mean, I, I think you're, you're saying the same thing is, is it's all about the relationship happens with by interaction. Right. And yeah. so uh, finding and staying connected while bringing value. So it's one of the things that I've seen through councils or boards or whatever. It's, it's really less about sitting around and having conversation. It's more of bringing value that is not, Hey, 
buy this product from me or buy yes. this service from me. This is I'm here to provide value to make your life better or to make this association better or whatever. And you're all working for kind of a common cause. And subsequently, people make connections and want to do business out of that. But that's not the ultimate goal while yeah. you're going into it. It's, hey, how can I bring value? Yes. And after our videotape the other day, I emailed the managers that were involved and I did a disclaimer. I said, I am nothing like my character. <laughs> but let me know if we sh you want to do business. So I tried to spin it. But, you know, I'm not going to just go up to don't go to a lunch meeting and be like, do yeah. business. Here's like, my card. Yeah. yeah. Oh, creep. No, don't do that. <laughs> um, and people are so inundated and with emails and cards anyway. I just have a conversation with someone and you know, they'll, they'll call you because they know what you're doing. Like, you know, that I love everything that you guys do because I, I went back after we taped it to my boss. I was like, this is what I want to do in my career. I want to be full brand manager. I'm creating a career path. Here's <laughs> all the steps I'm doing. He was like, you already do half of that. So calm down. But <laughs> you know, down. you got, you talk about coffee and marketing, but I also know about your company. I want to ask you about it. And you, so I just, I love that. One day we might make some money off of the fact that we have so much coffee, but it's really mostly. It's <laughs> Are mostly you drinking locks, all of it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's mostly locks and keys that we that we try to make money off of. But we do have a lot of coffee. So, yeah. uh, but it is it, it's it's again it's I, we have found years after year after year that there's very few people that want to sit around and I'm sure in the same industry um, is sit, sit around and want to talk about locks and keys, right? I mean, it's, unless you're in the industry and you're passionate about it. Most people are like, yeah, I have I have a, a landscaping that needs to be maintained but I don't really want to talk about it all the time. Like I just need to make sure it's taken care of. Yeah. So um, let's talk about something else that will be really fun and exciting. Um, all right, cool. Well, I appreciate you coming in today. Um, I think some good takeaways. I'm, I'm sitting here. I was jotting down some notes. Uh, don't get distracted with the competition. Listen to the customer's problems and, uh, and understand the value of industry associations. Those are some things that uh, kind of kind of pulling out of that and, and ways that you can improve you know, whatever industry that you're in or whatever connection point that you're in is creating those value points. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Mackenzie, thank you again for joining us today. It was such a blast. And uh, hey, if you need a if you need a turf specialist or if you just need somebody that will make your long grass short, you can definitely get in contact with them. Uh, they will take care of you. Absolutely uh, fantastic. But anyway, thank you for joining us today. It was an absolute blast. Uh, great conversation. Some great takeaways. Don't get distracted with the competition. Listen to the customer's problems and really get involved in some industry associations. It will benefit you greatly and get you an opportunity to add value to your customers. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. And if you want to find out more, you can visit us on our website. It's lockdoc.net slash podcast. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next time right here on the Coffee Break Podcast. <laughs>